Welcome back and thank you for spending your uh, Halloween week with us, DeSoto <laughs> Brown and Martin Despang, here in our beigey, brownish, brutalist building, broadcasting live from our Green Mountains, mm -hmm. Malka, and Blue Makai. Yep. Ocean metropolis of Honolulu, Hawaii. That's very succinct. Yes, you said that just right. Well, and um, if we want to do anything in the show, we want you to teach you how to teach yourself. Yep. And we've been teaching each other. And mm -hmm. actually, Timothy Schuler yep. has been kicking this off with an article about tropical brutalism Correct. in the Flux magazine. Correct. And we got really excited about it. And we actually mm -hmm. did individual shows about it, having mm -hmm. each other on the shows. Mm -hmm. And ever since it's with us, right? Yes, and so it is. we got the right lens. So wherever we are, we see like brutalism. We see. So yes. you did. And we actually prepared this uh, show a long time ago. You just remembered actually about in January of this year, right? That's right. And let's go to the first slide because you spotted something when you were traveling another island. That's right. I was on Maui and I was walking around in Lahaina, driving around Lahaina, and I saw very interestingly a single family residence that was brutalist, mm -hmm. which is very unusual because brutalist buildings made of concrete normally are business or commercial. Insti institutional, right. right. So this was a much smaller scale one. Yeah. Fascinating yeah. for me to just encounter yeah. unexpectedly. And it always makes us wonder how to distinguish the sort of invasive brutalist that just comes from the East Coast and right. actually comes from France. Mm -hmm. Le Corbusier originally, or if it is a tropical brutalism that has been adopted as far as adapting to our climate here. As it should be. As it should be. And next picture, while we bring the next picture up, um, today uh, I sent you the National Docomomo newsletter that was very nervous about putting uh, one of the icons, mm -hmm. monuments of tropical brutalism or brutalism in general mid-century landscape that is by the Lawrence Halprin and that's the freeway park in Seattle on the register yeah. because they're planning to change something so it's they're like me. frantically like saying well let's you know secure it yeah. and we here want to also point out that you know we got the mountains here and the crystal water coming out of it as mm -hmm. springs that's so phenomenal right and so mm -hmm. it is on Pacific Northwest while well, Halprin built not only this, but in Portland, the, the Keller Fountain, which is the same, bringing this amazing natural element of water and water falls into the mm -hmm. urban area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a very proletarian approach, yeah. basically, while you might not be able to drive up to the mountain if you're so poor, he brings it down to, to you, you into the in urban, the center right? of the city. And we could have, we actually used to have that in a very small scale yes. as part of the uh, plaza of the... No, the, 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 financial, the plaza. financial plaza of the Pacific, right, yes. is the full name. Yes. And um, it's, unfortunately, the water has been drained. They shove dirt in there and there's grass growing. Mm -hmm. And now we see a shift of tenants because the American Savings Bank sign is off. And the other bank, was it Bank of Hawaii? Or, yeah, it's uh, Bank of Hawaii. And, and there is now one of the largest architectural firms in there. Correct. And we urge them to get that money to basically yeah. get the dirt out and put water put back water in there. Put water back in the way it was originally Be designed. Because now this place up there at the top right, which we've been referring to, is actually the closest as it gets to. Uh, a canyon river uh, mm -hmm. in the built environment and that's one block over diagonally from here right yes and at the very bottom you can see one of the now we have to say soon to be former tenants in there that's the top one that's the american savings bank uh, tower and let's go to the next slide uh we've been here with tim up there you and tim up there mm -hmm. we've been uh uh, enjoying this because of the, these uh, these sort of shading trellises yeah. and I was amazed when I interviewed here they walked me by how they hold up and the beautiful shade they kind of create and you know sort of like you know artificial tree canopies if you mm -hmm. want so and move on to the next slide we're always evaluating from a performative point of view as well and been saying while the brutalist by itself as you once perfectly basically uh, you know, was categorizing brutalism yeah. as the minimization of glass and the maximization of concrete right. in that case, right? right. And that's right. per right. se already better because maximizing glass means overheating. Right. And here we can be sort of, we would start to say how much heat is going through the concrete. Yeah. And by, by minimizing the glass, there's less heat getting in there. The one at the top left, I will 
say nothing because I'm not supposed to, but I will say, say stay tuned and excited about what we see in the top left. We will get okay. to that in a couple of shows. All right. But anyways, All right. American Savings Bank reminds us of something, well, it reminds you of your father, right? Yeah, because as I remember, when the Financial Plaza first opened, the shorter of the two towers mm -hmm. was the American Savings Bank Power, that's and that's where my dad had his office when it first opened. Yeah. So I used to go there all the time in the 1970s when it was yeah. new. And, and on the way here, me sitting down there with you in the Lanai lobby of this building, this is across the street. Mm -hmm. They took the sign off, but it's so sort of faded out. You still see the silhouette of yeah. American Savings. So it's, it's absolutely more than a fantasy memory. <laughs> might be something true about it. I hope so. And, and sort of, you know, having been a, a good client or representative of culture reminds us of a previous uh, show and, and project. Let's go to the next slide where um, America Sa American Savings Bank um, is has also been demonstrating right way back. Yeah. This is the one on Ward. Yeah. And uh, we were as Docomomo there on the right. We were too late when they already decided to basically um, bling that with and you know the new is out there. The old is outdated and the new is cool. There's yeah. some kind of flimsy translucent panels and they kind of threw these wonderful ceramic tiles out. Luckily, uh, each of us got one as a little Christmas gift, and I think we have them in storage somewhere, so at least they're kind of salvaged. Correct. But again, they're not in the bank anymore, and that's but, unfortunate. But you said, and this is, these are custom-made ceramic pieces Absolutely. that are fitted together to make the screen that you can see that, that screens the upper yeah, floors. Yeah, yeah. And I think in that picture, I'm holding that up, looking through it. Yeah. <laughs> with we the King Center here. in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that was a unique part of that well, building. And, and the, the building was also unique, not only from inside out, but also from outside in. And yes. you have some cool childhood memories of that. Let's go to the next slide and share that. Yeah, well, so when this building was built in the Ward area, uh, it was still all low rise, lots of wooden buildings. Mm -hmm. This looked extremely modern and very eye catching, but it also is a predecessor to the state capitol. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a miniature bonsai version yeah, yeah, yeah. of the Hawaii state capitol. And when I saw the state capitol in you know, 1969, I said, that looks just like that bank building. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Usually it's the opposite, right? Uh, right, right. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide that shows us the most iconic. That reminds you of that mm -hmm. the top part of the capitol, Very the cantilevering floating part, is basically the glass behind these kind of fins. And look at the concrete quality, that's superb, mm -hmm. that's mid-century, mm -hmm. that's most likely poured in place because yeah. that's what they did, what they were able to do, which we can't do these days anymore where labor is so expensive and the skill has gone down the yeah. drain. Here, not so much, everything was still up. And I love the way there's that interior edge, yeah. detailing edge inside yeah, yeah. that, that Absolutely. Upright, upright rectangle. Absolutely, very lovely. So while I was on sabbatical, you kept me up to date yes, I did. and told me that the, this client, the bank, which is one of the main banks on the island, and my friend and colleague, uh, Tropicure Rockwood, actually banks with them. And he mm -hmm. told me, and I looked it up because it doesn't sound very Hawaii at all, but it is a local bank. It is bank, a local bank. Right? Yes, it they is. Were just, the other ones call themselves Bank of Hawaii, First Hawaiian Bank, right? So they dwell on that mm -hmm. local, but mm -hmm. these not so much. That's kind of interesting, right? They're kind of doing the opposite. Yeah, there's a whole other interesting background to this all right. Asian people mm -hmm. starting their own banks because they weren't being helped very much by all right. the established banks. Okay. And that's what one of these, oh, these, these are, are. These are the rebels. These are the rebels. Okay. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Well, let's see how they live up to that rebellious, because they did architecturally, right? They said, let's do the best of the bad. And look at you, how that tapers down yeah. at the bottom. It's, it's really exquisite. So next slide is that you kindly kept me updated when I was half around the world. And you sent me this article here, uh, basically saying that they have been so dispersed with their different facilities, yeah. as we're talking about, and there were more that try to consolidate mm -hmm. and bring it all into one headquarter building, as mm -hmm. it says there for a big budget, big bucks. Yes. And then they have this sort of uh, making you curious uh, image there of a very prestigious location, which is not far away from us here, right? Mm -hmm. It's a couple blocks over Eva mm -hmm. end. And, um, you know, we, the easy breezy fanatics would say, oh, wow, this is all out there, but we have to disappoint already. There is actually something that separates you from of the course. environment. There's, there's right? the plate glass window there. So yes. let's look at that next slide. And we've been, as we are the private investigators, we've been 
Snoop dogging around here mm -hmm. and there. And at the top left is when we were out there at Grace Pacific Rock Mountain Precast at Campbell Industrial Park, the prime precast manufacturer on the island. They were actually making panels for the beginning of the building, and the bottom is them being trucked out there. And next slide is when that all got assembled here. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't drive and take pictures, so don't, you don't did. do that, don't do that. Yeah. I probably stopped, Brian. I think you did. <laughs> so here you can see, and it's this rather interesting uh, thing that goes up there, which is sort of strange. It looks almost Aztec, right? Mm -hmm. Very crude, very monolithic, very mm -hmm. stereotomic, that big chunk. Yes. Were you wondering, you know, what, what that might be, which we didn't know too much about it at that point. We were just curious. But next slide uh, became more obvious because all of a sudden, how, how did uh, Jay call that? Because our permanent background, he says it looks like a pagoda. He said it looked like a pagoda. I said yeah, it's yeah. a pagoda full of money if that's the case. But it I, does, it is a separate structure on top of what we just saw. And I have one informant who knows the building fairly well, also from inside out, and he basically uh, can't be named, but uh, he basically knows more about it than we do, and he basically calls it the palace within the poverty. Mm -hmm. And that's another issue because this is a location here where the urban nomads yes. uh, like to congregate, find a place to stay pretty yes. much. So, um, so, and this is also a very sort of privileged, I guess, favorable view of the, because this, I, this is actually on my way home. I park on Nimitz and then it's my little congregation in the morning because to reset my mind to what we're talking about mm -hmm. in our very inclusive manner. I walk by the urban nomads, so it really sensitizes yeah. me about that issue. So here it's sort of over romanticizing because there's a rainbow there in the back of it. Right. It's almost like staged, whereas there's another <laughs> reality to that, which is the yes. next slide here, uh, which is this picture here, which um, again, in this newspaper article, they were sort of describing it a little bit twistedly or the wrong way around, we said, as from, from inside out, they're talking about the view yeah. and kind of the view changing through high tech glass to basically uh, allow um, it to be activated in a way that you wouldn't get the glare. And when the glare of the sun is gone, then you would have the view again. Correct. Right? But as you were saying, it may, it's not just the glare that is the situation because heat is coming in as well. So does that cut the heat transmission into the building? And if it doesn't, you're building a nice little greenhouse that yeah, heats up. A microwave, exactly. That's right. And that's we referring to that bottom left uh, with a symphony and bottom right is the symphony at sunset, which might look cool. And I should have brought this postcard that they have. They have these bedazzling kind of glitter <laughs> postcards. Yeah, have you yeah, seen yeah, yeah, I yes, think I we have. brought them in another show. Yes, I have. Which, and then they're titled, the one we have, uh, is titled The Golden Sunset yes. of Honolulu. Yes, in Waikiki. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it might look good on the postcard, but if you're uh, behind glass uh, when that sun sets, it's hot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, the, given uh, the sort of, quality of glass has improved over time. Yeah. So you were, you're able to do low E coated, high reflective glass, triple glazed, argon filled, but it's still glass, mm -hmm. right? So with the extreme sun here, yes. all glass buildings yeah. have always been wrong and will always be wrong. And so let's check this out a little bit more uh, here on the next slide. We've been talking about, you know, the, the bioclimatic design 101. This is facing south pretty much. And to the south, we used to bring our cap and yeah. have the lid mm -hmm. and say when the sun is high, mm -hmm. the lid helps you. Mm -hmm. So for the south, it's horizontal shading. Yes, right. 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 These are vertical. Right. So they don't do anything but, how do you always call it? Well, they're decorative. Yeah. They exactly. are just a decorative element to the building, which doesn't perform anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next slide here is uh, us again. I think you brought us. I said it's our yeah, Halloween show, right? Yeah, yeah. So last year, if I can hold this up, last year at this time, I was uh, doing a show about Brise Soleil mm -hmm. or uh, sun shading. Yeah. And I wore a costume. Well, I don't have a costume this year, but I do have this wonderful. Put this in front of your face. That's I do enough. have this wonderful, Alrighty. scary, giant yeah. jack-o'-lantern cookie. 
And so that's, color wise, it blends in well. We were talking about beigey and brown, that's right. That's right. That's and, right. That's and then right. the golden sunset of Aloha. Of Waikiki, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. But, to, but back to this building. Back to that one, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So to the, to the west, yes, vertical fins you know, are principally, but they need to be significantly deep. Yes. In best case, they need to be rotatable, as in that building on uh, Wailea Avenue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, or in perfect case, they would be turned north. So you basically block the west sun. This is how the Alamana building had yeah. it to its west side and also yeah. to the east side in the yeah. morning. And then you get that nice northern light while basically blending the, the right. harsh. With keeping out the really blinding sun. direct sun. Exactly. Right. So here again, according to your classification, this is uh, decorative or ornamental, yeah. you like to say, yes. you know, as yes. well. So not so good. Let's go to the next slide. So what could one have done better? So here uh, at the top, we've been pointing out the, the, one of the recent Howard Hughes Towers by Boland Savitsky Jackson, who is a firm that's very knowledgeable in glass construction because they did the Apple store in New York yes, City. It's which is all famous. glass. Right. It's all structural yes. glass. That's top-notch high-end. So mm -hmm. they can do better than just basically fix glazing and some gestural awning windows that aren't enough to get this through. And I was surprising you with this sort of uh, exotic uh, jealousy system here, Correct. right? Correct. And so this is from Germany, mm -hmm. and of course the innovative German people. And you said it's triple glazed. Mm -hmm. It's got argon between two of those panes of glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's jealousies. Yeah. So you have on one hand the advantage of being open to be able to open and close them to let the breeze mm -hmm. in and out, mm -hmm. which we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. But if necessary, you can close them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, as you can read, it says triple glaze, it's thermal broken, and it's flush all glass look. So you achieve the same clean, sexy right. look that they want, mm -hmm. right? While it's performative. Exactly. And as you point out, if like now, you know, the heat has gone, it's fall here. So it's perfect. You got the same 73 outside that you right. like right. to inside. have inside. Right. So let's bring the jealousies open and yeah. use the all natural, all right. cheap, the best air conditioning in the world, the trade mm -hmm. wind air conditioning. That's right. While in the summers where I'm sneaking away, so mm -hmm. you have your to deal with your heat here. But so did you this uh, last summer in Europe. And we will see how do we we're deal with see that, that later. at the end, right? Yeah. And then you can close up and do what they call split system and yeah. run your AC a little bit, but then you keep your the cool inside, right? Because you don't you know, and lose it because through mm -hmm. even like, you know, single pane anyways, yeah. as we were shocked to see when they were retrofitting the Waikiki Park Hotel into the Halapuna, I, I stared up close when Ron was yeah. touring the building and I was with him and I saw it single pane, right? Yeah. But with, with triple pane, you know, argon filled, there is no such thing, right? Yeah, so it would be it's insulated. And again, it's like, well, we're not we're not uh, pre-contact anymore, right? We're post-contact. The world is wide open, so you we probably want, want all the goodies from that's right. from everywhere. That's right. Here. That's right. We do. There's no yeah. reason for us not to have them. Exactly. And if this technology will help in any mm -hmm, way, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. So if you wanted to glow at the bottom, let's go to the yeah. next slide here. This is a project we did for Manoa a couple of years ago. We call it the Tropical Textile and developed at the bottom is uh, Les Campers, president from Great Pacific Park mm -hmm. Mountain Pre-Guest, who, by the way, his son is in company too, and it's uh, Adam Camper's birthday. So happy birthday, Adam, uh, along this way here. And the difference here is that you can see um, while the, the, and we can say by now what the, what the kind of the plinth is at the um, yeah. uh, savings yeah. building right. is basically parking, it right? Is. Yes. And you got maybe a porosity percentage of maybe, I don't know, 40% or something mm -hmm. like that. Here it's like 80%. Correct. Because these are almost like chimney blocks. Mm -hmm. They're turned sideways. And so they have maximum uh, uh, transparency and yeah. openness to let the breeze go through yeah. while they're calibrated with three feet wide high and deep to always block out the sun. Yeah. So you never get the yeah. sun you know, going Direct. through, but you always have the wind going through. Yeah. And that's the way we think you should build on the island. And maybe one could have built that plinth as well, yeah. because uh, maybe not just for the cars and something else we're gonna get to in Which our we will, yes. tradition of polemic propositions towards the very end. But let's first, uh, before that, uh, find out a little bit more about the building, let's go to the next slide, because online you find this one here. This is from, 
Uh, one of the largest architectural engineering firms in the country, Leo A. Daly, headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska, and that's my home away from mm -hmm. home out there in the prairie. And uh, so they've been credited and crediting, the, crediting themselves as to be the architect of record originally. And that reminds us, next slide, of uh, a young emerging talent here, Matt DeBoer, I met, who was basically um, teaching their corporate firm a, a lesson within the same typology. Please go back and watch his show, then you will see that he was bringing in a little bank project. Yeah. And basically, that way, he got that firm getting the awards they, they wanted so badly, but never got because of their corporate nature, they got yeah. them again, and yeah. reconnecting to their roots. Yeah. And so if you want to see that bank building, go back and watch the show. Uh, but here on the top right, you see uh, his uh, academic work, his thesis, that's very much in line with the primitivas we're exploring. So yeah. he was um, and, and we visiting each other. So go to the next slide. That being said, and, 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 and Matt basically then wasn't appreciated as much as he should have been, so he moved on. So right. our message to these corporate firms is yeah. use these young emerging Don't let talents. Them get away because they're going to be the future and they're going to direct your way, which is a post-fossil way because they're the generation post-fossil. Yeah. They, they're at the beginning and the future of our world and their world is in their hands and they will be passionate about so it, do and, it and fight for it. Yeah. So let's just say, what if, so here's again, uh, Les Campers, very specific Rocky Mountain precast, the double T's and then the middle is a long-term collaborator, the legendary Dr. Alfred Yee, when we had a chance to meet each other in the middle here and go to the next slide, because then I had my individual meeting, right? Yeah. With Alfred Yee yeah. and very nervous, you know, and <laughs> he basically said, Martin, structurally, you know, that kind of bony system, he said, don't worry about it, that's a no brainer. But I want to talk about the building because it reminds me of Queen Emma Gardens, yes. which he had done with Yamasaki. Right. And he said, in the early 1960s. Yeah, yeah. And then he said, that building is alive and it lives. And so this one here is. So that was very encouraging. Right. So, and next slide, we would have built with the same elements that they have done, yeah. uh, basically the parking garages, and we refer to Walmart. I might always look at the ones who are the most efficient and effective, yeah. and we don't want to encourage everything that Walmart does with no, cheating their employees no, as no, far as wages no, no, and stuff like that. But as far as building, yeah. the way they built their parking garages makes sense. That's the most efficient and effective way to basically build this precast uh, T-shaped yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. panel. And as you were saying, was that made here? Yeah, yeah, it was. That's, that's what she said. Yes. West at right. Campbell Industrial right here on Park, Oahu. and it's perfect, uh, uh, perfect uh, quality and surfaces and finishes. It's really great, and you can celebrate that. And that's what the Primitivas pretty much yeah. kind of do. Go to the next slide, and then you end up with Primitiva, right? Right, and Here's, you end up with Primitiva. But what you pointed out too, this is also where the no, the nomads are. Mm -hmm. And what's been, there, there are several things to advocate for. First of all, Primitiva, which is the projects that you push in your classes at mm -hmm. university, in your architectural classes, but also to allow the nomadic people to be moving into the spaces occupied by cars mm -hmm. after we shift away from using cars as personal mm -hmm. transportation. Mm -hmm. And they've done some steps at the American Savings Bank building to mitigate that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if, in fact, that takes place, then... Yeah, and, and that, that's coming soon more in detail. But here also we integrate nature yeah. in a more uh, substantial way and not, as you say, in an just ornamental way, decorative just, way. Yes, right. I mean, there's this right. lawn, you got to water, and this is, has nothing to do there with the interior looking pretty, right? right? And so you go into the lobby, and next slide, and we can't, you know, we're too suspicious as the kind of scandal reporters we are, right? Mm -hmm. So they didn't let us. We have to no, rely no. on the person I know who is in the building right. often. So he tells me it's very, they're trying to push again the, the kind of the nine to five Dolly Parton open office thing again. But, you know, it has always had its issues with privacy. So the same thing is like they didn't improve anything on that side so that people are saying, well, we're not allowed to have our customization, yeah. our individualization. Yeah. And, so there's issues, and it's really not that hasn't evolved. And then in the lobby, this is totally AC, chilled down to the 60s, and it's all basically corporate, sterile surfaces and materiality. And this lady here is waiting for France to do her yoga in-house, in yeah. pretty much. 
So they all stay inside, hermetic, mm -hmm. artificially oil yes. conditioned. Yes, yes. And then there is this little monitor there in the back that almost every building has to have these days. Mm -hmm. And then this tells a story about what they call the sense of place, yes. right? You're very familiar with that. I'm one. very familiar with that. Because you guys sometimes get asked to be uh, part of that yes. and, and bless and things, you know, which, Yes, that has occurred. Which yes. uh, I also I, experience yes. you in saying, no, I don't do these things. No, I don't. Right? And I there's don't. a reason for that. That's right. So next slide here is pretty much um, zooming in. And ironically, I say they, this is the story they tell is about a stream. Mm -hmm. And, and the stream is just on the screen, and you're sitting in this AC, so it's very surreal. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next slide is how it could be less surreal and basically be more performative, oh, that's right? right? That's the right. water. Right. In Primitiva too, where the right. water is recognizing we can have evaporative cooling effects here in our very special tropics, where we don't have 100% humidity saturation in no. the air. And uh, so that we can do. And the next slide is, is going further into detail what you already scratched the surface, that here in the article they, 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 they talk very elaboratively about that transportation system that who chooses not to use a car gets incentives mm -hmm. and these allow the other ones to, to use a car. But if you do more, there's, there's our culinary connoisseur uh, Joey down there, our cross-cultural in Munich, in downtown Munich, and this is one of these innovative commuter bikes, and he's commuting with public transportation and thinking about getting himself a scooter. So all these things considered, uh, next slide here is, uh, as you already said, if you basically uh, encourage a large majority of people to use public transportation, you can, uh, you can free up some space in yeah. that sort of people power parking plinth exactly. that we did a show about. Right. And welcome the urban nomads and have a coexistence between the privileged who live upstairs and the ones living downstairs, which I think they're actually more privileged because it's naturally ventilated and easy breezy and not hermeticized. <laughs> that's right, right. That's I right. I would move, would like to move into the plinth and not into the microwave. <laughs> not, into the, not in the microwave. There, right, right. Right. And the other problem you can solve is that is that dirty river down there. So as well as I mean the along the river, the people problem you solve, and in the river you solve that. Because next slide, and what is that? Well, this is astonishing. Um, you said this, where is this? This is Hamburg? In Munich. Munich, downtown okay. Munich. So downtown Munich, there's a river running through it. And there is Joey looking at the banks of the river and taking a picture. And there is a man submerged in the river. And that's you. Mm -hmm. And that's because it was incredibly hot during, yeah. it, during this past summer in yeah. Europe. Yeah. So you jumped in the river to cool down. And as mm -hmm. you said, it's very cold because mm -hmm. it's coming from the Alps. It's coming from, it's coming the, from Alps. the Alps. Aloha mm -hmm. from the Alps. Mm -hmm. But the main point is this is a river going through a major city yeah. that is clean yeah. and has natural borders. It has yeah. natural banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not culvert. It's not in a concrete culvert. Yeah. So you're saying, OK, that can be done in Germany. Why can't we do it here? Exactly. And that applies to both, right? There's yeah. close to no people on the street. So if we can solve that problem there, we yeah. can solve that here. That's right. And we can, we can have clear rivers in a city that's as large, even larger than this city. We should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And this tenant here is supposed to do that, clean up the river, right? Which I hear they are sort of, but they're mm -hmm. a little behind, so we encourage them. Yeah. And also, again, let them live in your building to then, last slide, to live up to your promise right. that you make to your customers right. on their credit slash debit cards. With, right? the, with the clean, pure, beautiful ocean breaking onto the beautiful exactly. sand. Exactly. Right. So with that, at the end of the show, uh, hopefully you see us again soon with another episode of Human Humane Architecture. And until then, please stay very tropically exotic. Bye-bye.